In this video, we will discuss how to use Power PMAC as an EtherCAT Slave I.O. device. First, we will discuss how to configure the hardware. Then, we will discuss the new parameters that can be used on the EtherCAT Slave device. Finally, we will discuss the software configuration, both on the EtherCAT Slave device and also on the EtherCAT Master. EtherCAT Slave functionality can only be found on the Power PMAC 1040 UMAC CPU as of August 2022. However, this can be a slave to any other PMAC or other device which can function as an EtherCAT master. When ordered with the EtherCAT Slave option, the 1040 CPU has four Ethernet ports. The top two are for normal communication and using it as an EtherCAT master, respectively. The fourth port is the EtherCAT Slave in port. You can use this to connect to any prior EtherCAT slave devices or directly to the EtherCAT master. Finally, the third port is the EtherCAT slave out port. You can use this to connect to any subsequent EtherCAT slave devices. Because the 1040 CPU can also be an EtherCAT master on its own, if you prefer, you can connect EtherCAT slave devices to the EtherCAT master port instead. This will create a new EtherCAT network one with your original master device and the 1040 as an EtherCAT slave, and one with your 1040 CPU as the master. In this way, the 1040 CPU can even function somewhat like an EtherCAT bridge, as long as you manually pass the data the 1040 receives from its own slaves to your other master. Let's discuss parameters. All of these new parameters begin with the ecat slave prefix. The first parameter we will look at is ecatslave.enable. This parameter, when set to 1, 2, or 3, enables the EtherCAT slave functionality. A value of 1 will transmit and receive EtherCAT data on the servo clock of the slave. A value of 2 will transmit and receive EtherCAT data on the RTI, or real-time interrupt, clock of the slave. And last, a value of 3 will transmit and receive EtherCAT data as a background task on the slave. This means that it would occur asynchronously, not at a fixed frequency. Users will typically want to set this parameter in a header file in their project so that it is always on if they intend to use this feature. The next parameter we will look at is ecatslave.state. This parameter displays the current EtherCAT state of the device. A value of 0 means the device is not connected as an EtherCAT slave or that no master is detected. A value of 1 means the device is in initialization mode. A value of 2 means that the device is in pre-operational mode. A value of 4 means the device is in safety operational mode. And finally, a value of 8 means the device is in operational mode. Next, we will discuss a few specific parameters that use the ecat slave .pdo index i prefix. First and most importantly is ecat slave .pdo index i .data. This will contain the data that is being received and transmitted over EtherCAT between PMAC and the master device. Indices 0 through 63 contain data being written by the master to the slave, while indices 64 through 127 contain data being written by the slave to the master. Users will not be able to write to indices 0 through 63 while EtherCAT is enabled. This can be confirmed by checking ecat slave .pdo index I .rx tx flag. If this parameter is 0, it means that write protection is enabled and PMAC can only receive data in this register. The user cannot write to it. If this parameter is 2, it means that the user can write to this value and the master will receive the value written. Finally, users can check ecatslave.pdoindexi.index and ecatslave.pdoindexi.subindex to see where the data will be stored and also where the master device will read it. Configuring the EtherCAT slave is very simple. All that a user must do is set ecat slave.enable equal to 1, 2, or 3, depending on which clock they want to use. It's recommended that users do this in a header file, then download this file to their PMAC and save. This way, the device will automatically enable the EtherCAT slave functionality on boot. While not necessary, it may be helpful to create pound defined names for the EtherCAT parameters. This way, rather than trying to remember indices, you can give the registers more helpful names so you know what they are. Remember, index 0 is your first index written by the master to the slave, 
and index 64 is your first index written by the slave to the master. Users can then create PLCs or other logic to copy data in and out of these registers. Similarly, configuring a master device to use PMAC as an Ethercat slave device is also fairly simple, as it is effectively the same as any other slave device. First, you will need to load your ESI file for the device. In the future, this may be included with the IDE installation, but as of IDE version 4.5.2.9, it is not included by default. The ESI file can be obtained by reaching out to your local Omron support channel, but it is also stored on the Ethercat slave device itself. If you insert a USB drive into the PMAC and then boot it up, you can copy the file from the PMAC onto the USB drive. The following command, shown in bold on screen, can be entered into the terminal window of the IDE. It will copy the ESI file off the PMAC Ethercat slave device and into the root directory of the inserted USB drive. After this is done, the USB drive can be inserted into your computer and loaded into the correct software. If you're using a PMAC as your master too, you can load the ESI file into the IDE and scan the Ethercat network. Then the slave device should show up properly. You may need to issue an ECAT reset to the master after doing this before the first time you enable Ethercat. Once your slave is detected, you can select which PDO mappings you wish to use. The Ethercat slave ESI file allows users to enable up to 8 mappings of inputs and 8 mappings of outputs. These are not mutually exclusive, so enable as many of each as you need. Each mapping contains 8 variables, for a total of 64 inputs and 64 outputs with everything enabled. Note that these are transmitted as 32-bit integers, so any decimals will be truncated. If users wish to save the decimal precision, they can scale up the parameter by a factor of 10 and then scale the parameter back down in the master device before reading it. This can be done by writing a simple PLC to run on each of the master and the slave device. We hope this video has helped explain how to use PMAC as an Ethercat slave I.O. device. If you still have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to your local Omron representative.